Um, I love the toilet seat thing. I don't know what those covers are for. So anyone want to tell me later, I'm open. Um, but there's really, there's two things going on in that video. There's content and there's medium. Um, first, the kids are telling us that they already know better. Um, they, they want real information, not old wives' tales. Um, they're basically saying, we can handle it, we know what's going on, and if you keep doing things the same old way, we're actually going to make fun of you. <laughs> the second thing that's going on is the medium. Online video has exploded. It's the communication mode of choice, along with social media and text messaging. The more we're out there talking to youth, the more we realize that they're trying to tell us something. And to date, we as adult health professionals have not been paying attention. Consider the statistics. 93% of our youth are online. That's where they live, not in books or in health classes, but in the cloud, the computer cloud, that is. And it's where we have to go. <clears throat> 75% of young people have mobile phones. 54% text daily. 87% sleep with their phones. 73% <laughs> use social networking sites and an even higher percentage of low-income youth of color use the same social networking sites. 45% have searched for health information that's hard to find, and hard to talk about. Since our audience lives in the cloud, it's where we need to go. How do we do that? There are four trends I want us to take advantage of, and if we do so as a field, we have a lot of people here today, and more online watching by live streaming video. If we do this together, we will magnify our effectiveness. The first one is optimized search. When an urban youth has a question about sex, they Google it and shit. <laughs> or they might use Bing or ask.com or any other site, but search is the first place they go. According to our focus groups, the results they get are moderately satisfying at best. What do we need to do? First, we need to understand how youth are searching. They're not going online and looking, typing in sex information, sex education. But they're saying, hey, where can I get some of those good gold box condoms? Free. They're not looking for HIV testing. They want to know what to do if they have a sore pimple or a rash down there. Once we understand the search, we have to get smart about search engine optimization so the right answers show up on top. OK, so the second thing. We have to think push, not pull. What we've been doing is hanging around, we set up our sites, we set up our surveys, and we wait for young people to come to them. No. <laughs> we have to be out where they are. It's our, that's our job. We have to deliver message, messages and we have to work on increasing access to services where youth already are and when they want it. Um, don't la launch a survey and ask them to come to your site to take it. Go out to a popular gaming site like I Am View and post a link there. Um, put a button on a mobile platform landing page that says Sex Info. And when they want the information, they'll click on it. Third, talk to not at kids. Kids are smart. They know that not using a condom is stupid. <laughs> they tell us that. They use the word stupid. We need to get a little more sophisticated about the complexities of their sex lives and their relationships. Saying use a condom is not doing the trick. We have to deliver information and engage in educational conversations that are meaningful. And if you infuse a little humor into your delivery, everyone ends up in on the joke. We're aiming for active, engaged participants in their own sexual health education. Fourth, keep your head in the cloud. We need to invest in the new media platforms that define youth's experience today. 
multimedia, apps, gaming. We have to be ubiquitous. A text message is not going to change someone's life. But regular text messages combi combined with Facebook page status updates and real life in-person contact and events just might. So these are the four trends. Optimize search, push don't pull, talk to young people, not at them, and stay in the cloud. They hold more potential to connect with youth than the pamphlets and the talks we've been relying upon. They allow young people to become participants, to explore on their own in safe environments, and to seek out the information they want in the form they want it. In other words, we need to transform sex ed from boring to brand. Like energy drinks, sneakers, makeup, and music, we want kids to be sex education consumers. We want them to engage, we want them to learn, and we want them to make the right choices for their lives. This time it'll work. How do I know? Sex sells. If you look at all of the big corporations, we sell cars, we sell clothing, we sell music with sex. We do not sell sex education with sex. There's one more really important component to all this, which is about evaluation and funding. At yesterday's researchers pre-conference meeting, um, we had about 60 preeminent researchers from across the country. We emphasized the discrepancy between the speed of funding cycles and the speed of technological change. In order to keep up with the pace of Silicon Valley, we've got to evaluate, iterate, and fund innovation. Small challenge grants, bringing new young researchers into the fold, these are ways to move the field ahead and keep pace with the times. To that end, if you want to be part of this, um, text ISIS to 61827, and you'll get on our mailing list. Promise no more than once a month text messages. And we also have, um, you can download the white paper. If you've got a smartphone, we've got a QR code. Um, or you can go directly to the ISIS website at isis-inc.org. Free white paper um, with all the information, the stats, and um, the, the process of what we just went through and what we heard from youth. Thank you for atten your attention, and thank you for embracing the challenge. Sex ed has never been easy, and you may find some of the ideas I presented today challenging, but I wouldn't expect otherwise. Unless we start experimenting ourselves, we leave the next generation in a very challenging position. <laughs>